Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. I wish you a happy Monday morning. Well, my God, the trading week has actually begun. And so we have plenty to talk about new weekly on the day as well. So as always, wishing you well, wishing the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest. And let's get into the live scene right over here. Bitcoin opening the day, or sorry, closing the day last night on its lows at uh, 34.80 on uh, GDAX over here, or Coinbase Plug, whatever the fuck you call it nowadays. Um, but overall, the big story is to be had on our higher time frame. So again, I you know, it, it doesn't need to be any more complicated than this right here. Two-day dollar chart you've been governed by the yellow 21 exponential for the i mean ever since you got the death cross right over here the green 55 and the purple 200 um the hidden bearish divergence still playing out as we spoke about uh, i believe this was like a week and a half ago or, or last week something like that right over here on this rejection of it and also just basically your oscillator making a higher high and price action making a lower high in the context of an overall downtrend and down we go typically speaking when you actually do get that sort of divergence you will pop back down to the lower to uh, to the lower portion to the lower end of the uh, bearish control zone, and as you can see, that we're also below the exponential once again. So higher time frames are very are a lot more easier to read. Of course, we'll go into lower in, into the lower time frames in just a second. But I just wanted to to know and just you know kind of point out that this can be as easy as you want it to be, or as hard as you want it to be. And with the higher time frames, I think that they lie to you less, but you'll be wait, but you have to exercise a little bit more patience, or at least that has been my experience. Of course, this is not intended to be any sort of like do I feel like I'm talking downwards right now and I don't want to be? That's not my intention. My intention is, you know, is just, hey, consider this perspective right over here. Uh, also, DMI, ADX, DMX, whatever the fuck indicator you want to call this. Uh, the fresh sell signal was confirmed yesterday, as we saw today, getting even stronger, actually. And uh, two-day dildo chart is kind of where all the action is going down. And just as an aside, I noticed that on markets that trade 24-7, the two-day dildo chart is actually more accurate um and what's even more accurate than that is a chart that doesn't trade on the weekends which we actually have one we have it on cmes right over here which i believe is uh pretty cut and dry and clear um i haven't changed any of these sports resistances in a you know i, I don't know in, in, in like a i don't know weeks what, whatever it was ever since probably this area right over here as you can see when cmes opened uh, last night at 6 p.m eastern in time um it was a quick up followed by a what can what can be recited uh, a retest of this area right over here 3550 no this does not count as a gap fill it's like everyone's it's like the gap's gonna become a fucking meme pretty soon man just because so many people are talking about it now it's kind of funny um it's not a gap fill but again you know it's just because you have a gap doesn't mean it's gonna be filled anytime soon i mean i've seen gaps go unfilled for like a year i don't think that this one goes on for a year i think it's, I don't know, it's probably gonna be filled sooner rather than later but just just saying you know it's one of those things that you pay attention to it when price action actually gets there you don't like you don't like look at it in, in like interpolate price action before it's even happened. That's you can't do that. It's it's, so, it's it may uh, maybe it's my fault for, for for perhaps making it sound like that. Hopefully hopefully I've not done just done it at a service, but uh, but I do want to make that clear. Anyways, uh, resistance right over here thirty five fifty. I do can I do count this basically a retest of that resistance. You also see that the hourly twenty one exponential is starting to get down around here as well. So again, you know I just think that this chart or sorry the CME chart just gets things so much better than spot charts because during the weekend you. Get get a lot of you know flighty floaty price action and that can you know fuck around with some of the indicators um you probably noticed uh last night that we didn't get it we didn't get a move until late sunday right so again that is why i don't i typically don't trade you know weekends really meaning just saturday and like the morning of sunday because there's just not that much going on right now i am a little bit short um i did take off my hedge uh yesterday and uh, i'm actually uh, added on a little bit of, over there but basically just wanted to uh just, just wanted to under i just wanted to undercover just wanted to to take off the cover of this 6300 short right over here and going back into the charts i will hold on to this as long as we're essentially uh respecting this guy as resistance in fact this is wrong that is not where it is. It's 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 right around here at around 35, uh, 69 ish area. So as long as we're below there, I do want to you know have a position short. Uh, I do feel like this move kind of has a little bit. I mean, it could have a little bit more. You know, again, technically speaking, uh, this bear flag over here that we were looking at yesterday, that does have a mesh move that's actually is just slightly lower, pointing all the way down to here, as you can see. Um, and by the way, this we spoke about this yesterday, and this was actually the trade to be taking. Um, I did uh, I, I, that is when I uncovered shit over here on my uh, on my main account, my streamer account. I don't pay as much attention to, to be quite honest. But again, you know, you broke. Uh, or sorry, not you. Bitcoin broke uh, this lower support right over here. Respected it as resistance going all the way through. You even saw this guy just a perfect retest of that, and then down later on in the day. Um, so again, you know, it's it's getting play. It does seem like it's been being respected, and overall, I am looking. You know, I. 
I, I mean, Intel, you know, as long as you're below this, this breakdown point right over here, yeah, I'm looking for 34, uh, what is this, like 34, 35, something like that right over here. Um, and overall, remember that we do still have this symmetrical triangle, the greater symmetrical triangle that we had been working on for about a, a couple weeks, so a little bit over a couple weeks, I think. Uh, that measure move is still pointing down towards around 3,300. So overall, um, the the actions of the past 12 hours or 24 hours since we last spoke uh, do, do offer, I mean, they basically just confirm what we've been saying for the last, you know, two, three weeks. I, I think most people tuning into, into this sort of content already know this, but there is in no way, shape, or form now an inverted head and shoulders. I mean, maybe you have like the fucking, the inverted butter butterfly, and that's the super bullish pattern that everyone's been looking for. But as, as far as, you know, the moon boy hopes of this uh, reversing back onto 5,000, um, you know, in the next, in the next couple of weeks, uh, that is, I just, I mean, if people are still seeing that now, it's like, okay, well, you can also think anything, <laughs> you know, you can think anything. If you can dream it, you can do it. And that's a positive message. I do want to be spreading, I do want to be spreading uh, positive messages, but I think that most people kind of by now have definitely accepted the facts. So what happens when most people have accepted the facts in the, in the markets? Well, you probably just get carry on, uh, get 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 carried onwards and downwards. Again, I do want to denote that uh, this four-hour dildo death cross being essentially confirmed right over here. Again, it, it, it ever so flashed a potential golden cross in the making on the four-hour dildo chart, which would have likely sent this uh, sent this at least like another ten percent, you know, maybe even twenty percent up, and that would have been a nice um, a nice little move. But the last time you actually even got a golden cross on the four-hour dildo chart was right over here. This was a nice ten uh, percent move from from bottom to top yeah almost 10 percent and then the time before that was right over here actually on the bull trap uh, or what i consider the bull trap of 20 uh 2018 yeah about almost 30 percent so pretty damn pretty damn impressive move right over here and uh the and, and the reason why i point this out is because when you do get this sort of price action where it's negated essentially it's 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 almost like hinted at getting it gets everyone gets all the over aggressive traders all the people who don't who probably you know they're they uh they are either over leveraged over aggressive or maybe they just don't really maybe maybe they just don't really know what they're doing at the end of the day who knows um but uh but but when you get that last minute rejection of getting that that is a very clear and honest signal of what the bigger bots and what the bigger algorithms and what the bigger accounts the market movers are essentially doing essentially thinking we have actually seen this a couple times in the past so to just go on over this uh there was a slight second right over here and this is right at around 6400 where bitcoin was getting everyone bullish over here as well right remember it actually had a very similar pattern it had a symmetrical triangle going on over here and uh, and everyone thought he had broken out you heard superman posting videos about breakout 7500 incoming 8000 and everyone's you know everyone's kind of like feeding into it great shit like that um but again no no volume follow through on that just like we had at that last current level and uh and, and you know it gets ever so close right over here you got the green 55 and the purple 200 just almost kissing and it gets negated at the last second red dildo party begins and darth maul shows his face and down we go now am i looking for a reaction like this you know literally down about over 50 percent in the span of a week and a half two weeks i would say probably not um uh off of this guy right over here but you know it do, uh, does this have more juice on it well there are there are actually quite a few things suggesting and that's why i'm kind of pointing it out right now because remember this overall pattern right here which i really do like this symmetrical triangle that bitcoin had been working on for again it started what 24th of december so yeah it actually been going for uh what like three weeks um oh, yeah almost three weeks so wow that's actually quite quite a significant one uh that that getting broken down to the downside that actually does have you know a measured move that's pointing you know quite further uh, than where we than uh, than where we are than where we are right now, going all the way down to essentially the prior low right around here, right around thirty two fifty ish area, which again that actually does match up with some other things that make a lot of sense. And on our higher time frames, uh, the weekly two hundred simple moving average is going to be right around that range. And as long as the two hundred simple moving average is is kind of holding this thing up, I don't want to have a position representing that I. Or sorry, I don't want to have a position that's essentially going for the next leg down on. But uh, to be very clear, I do believe that Bitcoin does move lower, but I do believe that it's probably going to take some time, or at least I'd rather have that belief as a trader, not necessarily as an analyst. An analyst can say that, yeah, this this looks bearish, this looks like it wants to go lower, looks you know god awful. But <laughs> as a trader, you can't trade that way until the time is right. So the time will be right, at least in my in, at least in my opinion, uh, when Bitcoin breaks thirty two fifty on a higher level dildo time frame, like it, uh, at least a daily 
preferably really a weekly, although things will probably blow through at that point in time. Anyways, it's this, it's basically the same sort of idea of what you had over here at 6,000. You know, it, the chart looks like shit, looks like it wants to break down, but when is the right time to be taking that short? Well, you know, as we spoke about before, it was, it was really on the, the last rejection of 6,300 after getting the two-day little death cross and then getting rejected of the 21 exponential. That was kind of the impetus for taking those trades, at, at least for myself and I think a lot of other people um, but uh, but as far as this goes right over here, you know, looking at the weekly and looking at our higher level oscillators, I, I'm not necessarily convinced that this breaks down anytime soon. I mean, you have your Stokes over here, which will be giving you, I mean, technically that's a little bit of divergence, although I don't necessarily use Stokes for divergence, but, uh, but, uh, but your weekly Stokes over here do, you, typically when you see that they do want to pop back up to be fair. Um, also, uh, but also, by, you know, on the other side of the token or the other side of the cone, uh, no pun intended, you do have the D you do have the DMX rough, rough saying, actually giving you a little bit of a signal right here as the ADX flashes a uh, solid color. So, so fair enough. Are we going to start trending again? I, you know, I, I'd rather have the more, I'd rather have the more conservative view of this. Uh, you do have Jewel over here saying, <laughs> Jewel is singing, like singing. She's a great singer, by the way. <laughs> she goes so hard. Um, but uh, you do have this one actually meeting the resistance right here. That is not a, it's a signal, but it's not a good signal. That's not one that I'd be interested in taking. You really don't see this thing get down here, to, like in this area too often. So that's also why I'm not necessarily looking for a full on breakdown. In fact, the last time that it was even in this range or even cracked this range was literally here in 2014. Uh, this was not the low though. This over here was the low. So that actually did create some nice divergence. And that is something that I really would be looking for. So if Bitcoin were to pop back up, you know, and start to fill out this range a little bit more while bouncing again off of 3250 that would just be so beautiful because what would be what would we essentially be working on well i mean we've been talking about this for for a while now but uh but going back on over here and putting this guy on and just extending this out well we would have again if this measure assuming that this measure move gets hit down around here which massive assumption to be fair and, and this is this is an opinion thing not technical analysis very bad technical analysis actually to to trade an opinion i i don't do it myself um but uh but what does this look like it looks like another another descending triangle just like you had above the six thousand level right over here so again looking at this guy um and uh and, and kind of judging that it would you know would make sense to sending triangles and just triangles in general are really great at what they do because they actually cause people to get onto the wrong emotional state where in relation to price action and you saw this at 6000 you saw this all like all throughout the 6000 area for 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 almost a year i mean that that's how that's how long the bigger accounts juice this area for it's this this was beautiful really um but everyone would get super bullish, you know, literally on the highs. I mean, you know, everyone gets bullish anyways, but, uh, but, but, but more importantly, or sorry, just as important, uh, people would get super bearish right on the lows, you know, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. All, but you know, yes, it, it, it eventually did break down as typically descending triangles do not always. I've seen every pattern break out every goddamn which way. Um, but my point is, is that, you know, it, it generated a lot of liquidity for that actual move down. So understand that the bigger accounts, you know, people who are dealing with, with hundreds of millions of dollars and, and, you know, and maybe even in some cases billions, uh, they can't just market sell, you know, it's, it's going to, it's going to quite literally destroy the marks and then their whole, the, you know, whatever they have is ruined for, for probably a longer time. So you kind of get price action like this, right? Where distribution happens here, 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 here. And, uh, and eventually just gets whittled down to, to, to the forest where it's like, okay, well now we have to mark it down once again, just because there's no more, you know, you, you can't meet that sort of, uh, supply anymore. Anyways, uh, do we get the same thing right over here? Again, it's, it's not, it's not like a done deal or anything like that. And funnily enough, we were to make a relation between this area that we're currently working on right now and, uh, what Bitcoin did in 2014, which I actually do think is quite relevant again, market cycles and, um, and, and overall, and they're overall characteristics are pretty similar for a particular asset and also across different asset classes because we're you know we're always dealing with human psychology here uh there uh, it is humans trading these things whether it's a bot or an algorithm there 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 was a great question in, in discord yesterday you know like why like why should we care when when bots make trades like well it's a, tra a trade is a trade anything that goes into the recent trade list is real like you can't like insinuating that bot trading is not real is the wrong 
mentality to come from. The look, the the liquidation engine does not care if you know if 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 that's if that's what happened in your case. Um, you know, and you can't make that assumption anyway, so it doesn't matter. You know, a trade is a trade, but no matter who executed it, that's my point. Uh, people just get really caught up in this because it's like for some reason there's some sort of thought that like bot and algorithm trading is like not. I, not real or it's I, I don't even know but again it's 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 really silly um it, and it's really really low level thinking in my opinion um you know it's it, it always goes back to you know passing off responsibility sorry i'm i'm lecturing right now i don't want to do that uh but basically this area right over here very similar to this area right over here how the fuck did i even get on that uh, on that topic but uh you know, you'll notice in this area right over here, the volume catch was, is very similar to, or sorry, very uh, ha has a special relation to your parabolic cycle right over here. Just like this one over here has a special relation to this guy right over here. Not only that, but the percentage drawdown before even getting to this area is very, very similar as well. About, sorry, you were consolidating for, for, for a few months right over here, then a 52.5% drop down, and same thing right over here, you know, consolidating for about a year, and then a n nice drop down, you know, 53%, whatever it might be. And then what, what happens when you get in this range? Well, you bounce up, you know, dildo body to dildo body, about 23%. What have we done right now? Well, uh, dildo body to dildo body, uh, sorry, about, uh, you know, 25. I'm getting this wrong a little bit, but, you know, around the same, around the same over, over the course of a couple months. Uh, but as you'll see over here in 2014, very similar uh, uh, signature. Sorry, I should actually round this out just a little bit more. The MVT signal, which is completely divorced from all those things, very similar as well. Just again, another confluent factor suggesting that market cycles, they have brotherly characteristics. They are not identical twins. They don't, you know, you can't do like a fractal thing and say like, oh, so we went up here, so we're definitely gonna go up here. No, it's very misleading as well. I don't wanna get into that. Um, but the MVT signal, which is divorced from those sorts of things, again, it is just the network value divided by the daily transaction value and then interpolated using forward back movement just create a smooth line, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, this, this oscillator right over here has a very similar reading to what we're doing right now. And hey, what's up, Abdallah uh, Dave? I hope I'm saying your name right, and pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Um, but you'll notice that every time that it goes above where my curse currently is on the oscillator, it calls about a, it calls a market cycle top, or it calls just a major top to begin with. Um, and then after that, it'll come down to where my curse currently is now, and that calls the market cycle bottom, or just a major bottom. Um, as, as over here, we actually did get down around here in February, which was an example of capitulation if you do want to see one uh, i think most people are around for that and uh and you know that was obviously not the bottom or perhaps this was just a bubble in its own self which actually does have some merit if you wanted to uh bring that discussion out anyways i'm getting way too sidetracked so so this is 2014 over here just to make, make a relation just this is what we were looking at um right let's actually get this in full visual view Okay, so we're going to look at this area right over here on the MBT signal, which is essentially right here. That's 2014, 2015. And you'll see you put in your top over here. MBT gets really, really high. You come back down. Then you put in your bull trap right over here, similar to what we did in 2018. And where and, and then it comes down in this range right over here, which is what we're looking at right there. And look at where the MBT signal is. It's straddling this 100 uh, level right over here on the oscillator. What ha what's happening in 2018? Well, where are we right now? We're literally right in that same range after doing a very similar similar signature again it's not one to one this is not like you can't do it exact to exact because it's not the right way but the overall posturing of this is very similar and that's what we can go off of and that's what we can actually use so looking at this guy right over here uh could it be safe to assume or uh, again assume is a bad word as well but could we do something like this over here where you know you bounce off the lows and maybe even put in a higher high it's possible it's certainly possible um and so that's why i'm in no real rush to get like the big short in just yet if 3250 breaks then sure yeah and i'm happy to wait for that until then i'll just be playing ranges i'm not looking to have like a big position open you're starting to feel it once again where the overall you know feeling of the market is very very bearish and you're going to notice everyone get super bearish at 3250 uh, i mean even more so than right now because right now the moon boys are starting to cope with the fact that okay the inverted head and shoulders was some sort of quasimodo fight fake out and now they have to you know i mean either let go of their positions or tell themselves it's gonna be fine it's gonna uh, guys i'm an investor now <laughs> don't worry i'll be an investor too but in perhaps a bull market um anyways uh so so it'd be great to you know come down around here get everyone bearish and then even put in a higher high right over here get everyone bullish again but again look at the volume of this you're gonna we're gonna be looking for something similar right the volume on this 
is not breakout volume. This is very corrective volume, just like we've been looking at in the lower time frames. So if Bitcoin were to bounce off the 3250 area and then pop back up, keep that one in mind because this is a very nasty fake out over here. I, I mean, uh, uh, looking at this area right over here, everyone in 2014 thought that this was the bottom. Um, obviously it was not. And similar to this area right over here, a lot of people thinking that this area is the bottom. So I would imagine that if we did spend some time, you know, also in between the 200 simple and 200 exponential really on the weekly, that would not, you know, uh, it, it wouldn't really change anything, but it'd be great for really generating a lot of liquidity uh, for those bigger traders. Anyways, um, as far as this goes, I think this kind of leads as a good segue into our next conversation that overall, um, looking at this guy and, and, and kind of judging him. I, I'm happy to be bearish as long as we're opening and closing uh, dildos, or sorry, weekly dildos below the 200 exponential moving average, which is currently around 4150-ish area. Yeah, a little bit below 4150. You'll notice that that's really been our governing factor ever since uh, getting into this more aggressive downtrend over here into this next phase of the market cycle. So, you know, looking at this guy, uh, that's essentially my general just position. Um, I won't go over too many higher time frame ideas during this video because I just uploaded a new long term analysis video today, or sorry, yesterday, uh, in the long term analysis playlist, and that's a much more in depth type look look into all this stuff. Nothing's really changed from a higher level t uh, perspective, so it's all very much relevant. If you want the more like you know long term analysis, long term projections, all that sort of stuff, definitely check out that one. This video is going to be focused a little bit more on lower time frames. The only reason why we're going off of this, looking at this right now is because it does it does have some confluence with what we're doing right over here anyways going back down into the lower time frames let's go to perhaps like an eight hour or something like this again i i, I want to be very clear about this this whole price action right here very fucking corrective very fucking corrective this the, this overall you know orderly drop off in volume that is your signal that is your sign and what's your sign my, my sign my sign is <sighs> wrecked with a chance of crying moon boys. Um, but, <laughs> you know, but uh, overall, I think the eight hour chart also gets it right as well over here. You can put a very obvious and very uh, worthwhile horizontal trend line right over here, which uh, where your proverbial right shoulder would have been for the <laughs> Quasimodoers. But, um, you know, th this this resistance would be coming in around 3585, you know. So so anywhere between that 3569, 3585, or 30 yeah, 3585 area. You know, as long as we're below there, the the more immediate direction is down. Remember this th this uh, this bear flag right over here still does have that measure move pointing a little bit lower, and then overall this symmetrical triangle uh, still pointed lower as well. Now here's the thing though, and one of the reasons why I don't think that 3250 is just gonna like it's just gonna like come down here and then shoot right through there. I, I think that it's, it's gonna spend some more time uh, in this range. Um, is you know looking at your oscillators right over here, they are typically speaking it doesn't stay down here for too long um i i know i know i have that joke it's like bro do you know what happens when the rsi gets really low like below 30 it can't go lower okay so we're getting on that inver fly firefly and we're going to the goddamn moon baby you know that kind of shit um but in, in, in all seriousness um when you do get these sorts of signatures it's it's gonna suggest that it's more likely that that we do start, you know, uh, filling out this area. And there we go, Bitcoin coming back down um, on our, yeah, there we go, another rejection of the 21. And again, this this is why the CMEs are just so much easier to read. This is a clear rejection right here, taking out the low of that, still being governed by the 21. And also opening opening below this horizontal right here, I mean, that's quite nasty indeed. So, so looking at that, I do like that for an overall signal. Um, and and really, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking for this move to, or, or I have or I have it on my radar that this move is is likely going to be uh, getting a little bit extended like soonish. Um, you are starting to get that signature in your momentum oscillators, which on the lower time frames, they they kind of want to spend some time at least going sideways. So so if Bitcoin were to come down to 3435, I'm definitely going to be closing some shorts there. If Bitcoin comes all the way down to 30 to 3300, 3250, I'll be closing the rest of my shorts there. I want to be back to neutral and uh, and especially be patient. There is no rush to get like a massive short in until 3250 breaks on my end. And that's on like a higher level dildo time frame. I'd be much more interested in waiting for, you know, another another move back up to the top of the range um, and really just frustrate the shit out of people because well, people hate that. Um, uh, I should get rid of some of these uh, alerts over here. That's not really relevant right now, now is it? Anyways, um, 
let's see yeah four hour stokes over here still headed down still headed south what about 10 hour over here 10 hour still headed south as well 12 hour same sort of thing still headed south daily still had its gaining momentum and headed south today i think we already covered this at the beginning of the video but still headed south getting rejected from the more bullish control zone and this is the really what i'd be going off of and um and the two day the two day little chart has just been so damn good let's actually see where the 10 simple right is right now i'm gonna guess that it's probably providing resistance right here let's see yeah yeah it's way above price action so we are below all major moving averages and the dmx 80 uh, the adx dmi is, is giving a short signal on this guy actually which we caught uh, freshly, I think it was yesterday, the day before, um, and uh, three day over here. Three day over here is telling you a little bit less, but three day, three day DMI uh, actually giving you a, a sell signal as well. Trying to get down around here and then boom up. So the higher level, the higher level time frames actually do have the momentum and do have and do suggest that we actually do want to break that area. To be fair, um, but uh, but but the lower time frames do say to me that this is likely going to take some time again uh you know in a more simplistic uh view of looking at this three day little time frame right over here 55 exponential cross on the downside of the purple 200 as long as you're living below the 21 and respecting that as resistance which bitcoin can't even you know touch it um that's you know no reason to be even thinking about longs or anything like that at least in my at least in my opinion i, I know i know you can take a long scalp in a bear market absolutely but it's you're going to set yourself up for a lot more statistical uh success at least in my experience when you look for patterns that align with the overall trend of the market so i'm happy to play bearish things in a bearish market and bullish things in a bullish market but not bullish things in a bearish market as i think a lot of people are going to nastily find out over here anyways um Okay, so yeah, we covered all that. So higher, you know, higher time frames actually do want to come down further. Uh, lower time frames tell me that we probably want to spend some spend some time going sideways. Uh, daily over here, daily jewel uh, did give a sell signal a couple days ago, right over here. Again, this thing just <laughs> this thing has gotten every good trade, and also DM, uh, DMI ADX on daily not giving you a signal, which is really weird. You're getting it on the two day and three day, but not the daily. So daily is like also going around, uh, but daily RSI also you know back into the bearish control zone, back trending below the exponential. Again, that was a bearish consolidation as we saw, never getting into the bullish zone at all, just, you know, trying to get, try, trying to rear its head above uh, the neutral zone, couldn't couldn't quite do that. And uh, we will be getting another short signal from an exponential and simple moving average uh, uh, standpoint relatively soon when the 10 simple and the 21 exponential moving average cross right over here, which will happen. Um, if Bitcoin fails to rally back above, let's say 3750 in the next, uh, I'd say next two, three days, you will get a signal on that. But again, I, uh, I, 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 I uh, 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 sorry, <laughs> um, you know, could we be tipping over right here and maybe be in, in the midst of creating an inverted cup and handle? It actually does look like that in a way, because you do have a very, uh, a very nasty uh, signature of distribution going on in this area right over here from, you know, middle of December to early January this low volume kind of hang around the highs uh, and still creating lower highs and then and then turning back down. You know, if we were to pop back down, put in, put in you know, some volume over here then and put in some sort of a handle, that would also make sense. That's essentially what I have my eyes on right now. So again, um, you know, the overall higher time frames have not changed or anything like that. You know, as far as the three things that I'm looking for, I mean, there's more things that I'm looking for, but the three like obvious and, 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 uh, and easy to grasp things that I'm looking for to get out of bear market mode is one higher high on the daily. Bitcoin hasn't done that literally in over a year. So no uptrends in over a year. That would be, that would be a great start. Uh, number, but that's not really going to get you finished. Number two is opening and closing a weekly dildo above the 200 exponential moving average right over here. To me, that is the governing factor factor for now because um because you know as long as bitcoin is below this area it's that's i mean we are very obviously respecting it as resistance you know going uh, going uh, cracking through this area also you can see that the 10 simple on the weekly is governing price action as well as it really aggressively starts to angle down around um not only that but the but the 100 exponential and the 50 i mean all major moving averages are about to be below the 6000 area uh, and that's actually my third point is that once if Bitcoin could get back above 6,000, essentially the area that it spent about a year consolidating around, uh, get back above that phase, you know, uh, that, that consolidation phase that would immediately switch me out of bear market mode and put me in like long term look, look for long term longs mode. Um, but as you can see, as, as we spend more and more time down here, these moving averages on the higher time frames migrate below that critical area. And that just puts more pressure on price action, more downwards pressure, pressure, and also 
on the way back up, it's likely to be a slow trudge. And this is also why I'm not really in a, in any sort of rush to get into to a long. People ask me what I'm going to do during capitulation. I say nothing because I'm probably not going to be able to get it anyways. It's going to happen so fucking fast. It's it's just going to be one person buying it essentially. Not one person, but someone with extremely deep pockets is going to essentially say, "All right, this one's good. This this looks good enough to me. Uh, let's hit the green button and uh, watch things go up about 10 percent in 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 the span of five minutes." That's going to be a good signal. Um, but uh, as you can see right over here, you know, on the way back up, there's there's going to be a lot of things to chew through. So if you think that we're just going to V bottom out of here, or the people that do think that we're just going to V bottom out of here, extremely unlikely. You're probably going to spend a lot of time, you know, in, in, in this accumulation zone and uh, chewing through people over there. And then, you know, at some, uh, when, when everyone's kind of done getting their uh, getting their fills in, then you get the markup once again. And well, the fun, you know, the fun resumes or perhaps, I mean, essentially I, I am making a, I, I am a long term believer in Bitcoin, but I'm making an assumption that, you know, it's viable long term right now. I do. I do think it will be, or at least I like to think that it will be, um, you know, obviously I'm not a programmer or anything like that. So I can't, you know, quite literally look at the coding or and shit like that and tell you about that. I'm not the person to go th to for that. That's why I consult with experts in those sorts of fields because I'm not one. I've not spent my, my life's energy learning that kind of shit. Um, in fact, I have, uh, I've, I've spent my life's energy learning technical analysis. So that's, that's something that I'm more comfortable with doing, uh, but fundamental analysis and, and, and just understanding the fundamentals you need, you know, you really need to, to put yourself in the, in the, in the dirt like that. It's not like you can't just read a fucking Buzzfeed article and think like, Oh my God, Bitcoin sucks And my new altcoin is actually the next real Bitcoin. It's like, no, it doesn't really work like that. Probably not. At least these are really, really complicated sorts of things. So I know enough to know that it is. Not simple, <laughs> not simple, and that's about it. That's about it. So, so, uh, so that's what I can say about that. But I am making an assumption with that. I am making an assumption that you know, long term, this is a viable sort of thing, which I do think it will be. I, I have a strong personal belief that anything, any sort of asset that gives people more autonomous control over their lives, uh, is is going to naturally be a thing that that humanity sh uh, gravitates toward, or, or at least should gravitate towards. I think most people uh, enjoy financial autonomy, but then again, also maybe like maybe you tell people like, hey, you can be in control of all your money, and you don't have to put it in a bank. You can be your own bank, and that like might scare them. Maybe they don't want that. Maybe people don't want the responsibility of that. I, who am I to say? You know, who am I to say? I, can't, I I'm not the judge of that. Um, but at least I would think that most people, more people, are probably drawn to that. Then again, like I said, I can certainly be wrong on that. Um, anyways, uh, okay, so I am getting preacher right now. I do apologize about that. It's not my intention. Let's go over and check out the longs and shorts. Let's talk about something relevant. Uh, longs at, at almost 32,000 open longs. We have about 33, tw sorry, 23, 23 and a half thousand open shorts with a uh, little over 4,000 of those hedged. So we really have about 19,000 open shorts versus 31, 32,000 open longs. That presents a problem as well. That does make me quite bearish um, on the actual dynamics of the market, the underlying uh, dynamics because remember that when we get over here to yeah is this it nope that is I, I'm, I'm confusing the price on okx with my longs and shorts now that's so crazy um but this is your longs on finex right this is your longs on finex we're but we're almost at thirty-two thousand open longs as we said before and uh remember anytime that it gets above where that where this uh, horizontal is right here at thirty-three thousand, then and it gets above these areas it does match up with major dumps as soon as it gets back below that horizontal so as you can see over here we popped back up and now we've actually broken into the downside so i do believe that you know we're probably going to get some uh get some nastiness uh relatively soon or at least it's on the way um but you know but but don't 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 mistake this oh my god don't mistake my my annoying stutter uh either <laughs> but uh but don't mistake this for, you know, as soon as you get to this line, it's dump time. No, in fact, you can get all the way up to 40,000 as we've seen before, before the actual dump, but make no mistake each and every time that it does get above this area, these have been, you know, lined up with major dumps. Um, let's go over here to the shorts, which I think is even more important when shorts get this low or like at the low 20,000 zone, especially below 20,000, that also historically matches up with major dumps as well. This over here, this was your dump in January. That was your major dump down then February low right over here. Then early early August dump right over here, then break a 6,000 right over here. And once again, we are not quite, you know, in that range just yet, but it is, it's certainly on the radar. So what you really don't want when a market bottoms, I mean, it's, this would be directly contrary to what I'm saying, but what you don't, a good, a good way to know that the market has not bottomed is that shorts are really fucking low. You want shorts to be on, on the high side, or at least like, 
or at least higher than longs. You don't want above 30,000 longs when you're below 4,000 right now. That, that I can say pretty damn heftily. So so that uh, this, while, again, it's, it's just kind of like a secondary confirmation factor saying, hey, if, you, if you're looking for some upside, be careful, um, be be very careful. But again, I'd be I'd feel more comfortable with with, with looking for a next big break uh, if shorts were down below twenty thousand. So speaking of the next big break, uh, where would I be looking towards? Again, go check out the video or sorry, go check out the long term analysis playlist with the video uploaded yesterday. But hey, I'll briefly cover it here, just just very 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 fast. But if the two hundred simple breaks on the weekly at thirty two fifty down around here, th this red line, which would be you know basically our lowest port right now uh, if that does break then the next area that i look towards is this blue box right over here between 23,000 and 26,600 right over here that is also the 886 Fibonacci retracement which is actually where you did bottom out in 2014 right over here um and also it would be some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming in from this area right over here and if we put on the volume profile you'll notice that we have a nice thick af node uh, encompassing that range and if we go over here to the blx index which actually has enough um uh, enough price action history you can see that the 377 ancient technology uh, exponential moving average is actually coming in right around 2600 and if we were to make a measure move off the potential and this is again making an assumption i, I want to be very clear when i'm making an assumption rather than doing real technical analysis but uh, if i were to make an assumption that this actually does work out as a descending triangle which so far so good although not necessarily on the lower support i mean we don't, we don't really have like a full-on you know test down there anyways um but if we were to make a measure move on this guy where would the measure move be pointing down towards well does it match up with oh my god 2300 so there you go you know that uh, that would be the next area that i look towards of course with the way that technical analysis goes people make it sound like you it's definitely going you know down to whatever range this would be the next potential bottoming area that i could look at doesn't mean it's going to be the bottom though it's just a potential we need to see the reaction afterwards that's the only way to judge it and anyone perpetuating any you know any different is I, I've never seen it been, been been able to be done. And I've been around some of the best of the best of the best traders literally in the world. Um, again, if you're new here and you're not familiar with me or my background, I come from the background as a market maker in equity options on New York Stock Exchange ARK and then later moved uh, above uh, Chicago Board of Ops Exchange. And that is sort of, that is where I come from. And people, you know, people there, they don't, they don't care. They don't care about that kind of shit to be, to, to be very, very frank. They just care about trading what's in front of me, in uh, front of them. So, so overall, you know, if this area were to fail, then yes, then then there's another potential area down around here, around 1850. If that area fails, then yep, then I can join the super bears down around 1100, 1300. But I think it's very inappropriate to say, and I, and I have not seen it been able to be done in a realistic way with real professionals um, saying that it's definitely going down here when there is, you know, obvious uh, areas above uh, above head. Doesn't mean that, it, I mean, again, it's, it's just saying we have to, you know, one thing before the next, you have to trade what's in front of you without, you know, getting in your own way. So that's that's, that's essentially my point right over there. I think I've covered everything that I want to say on Bitcoin. Oh, let's go check out GBDC. GBDC right over here, $4.32. Uh, again, basically just working on a bear flag that we had in uh, last week. Everyone thought that this was a breakout uh, on this uh, boost up above here. But again, just, just like spot exchanges, the volume on this guy is very corrective. You have this, that very orderly drop off in volume and then increasing volume on the sell side right over here. What happens when you have a failed breakout? Well, you just morph into something else. You morph into a bear flag. This is also why I really don't like playing bullish things in a bearish market. The breakout can happen, but it likely fails, and then you get something new. You get, you know, just basically in confluence with the bear market, with, with, with the overall market trend, I should say. Um, the measure move on this bear flag would be pointing all the way down towards our next support down around here. So it's beautiful that there's good confluence with that, right around two dollars fifty-eight cents. But same thing as spot exchanges. Don't want to play this until until really, I mean, you break like three dollars and uh, eighty-five cents right over here um and also keep in mind that there will be a gap right over here at four dollars 62 and a half cents so if and when bitcoin does get back around there maybe it pops back down to this area then rallies back up over here that's probably gonna be a nice trade um or at least i'd be looking for a trade like that you know it's, you have the same thing on cmes right over here remember that this is not a gap fill or anything like that uh could it be that bitcoin comes all the way back down here then rallies back up fills that gap and then then it's in play certainly yeah again there's we every gap in history has been filled but it can take in some case, I've seen I've seen in traditional markets in some cases, you know, years. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, um, okay, I think that's that's enough for Bitcoin right over there. GBDC again, I'd be bearish on as long as you're essentially below, you know, essentially below uh, as as long as you're below five dollars and twenty six cents. It's 
pretty nasty chart. Uh, and same thing for Bitcoin right over here. You know, as long as, you know, we, we, we spoke about the three things that I'm looking for to get out of bear market mode. Um, but in the more lower time frames, just kind of wrap the Bitcoin talk up, talk up is that as long as you're below 35.75, the more immediate direction is down. Um, if you can get back above 35.75, then actually not too much stopping you from this uh, former range high around 36.80ish uh, area. If that area gets taken out well, I actually don't believe that there's like this area right over here. I believe that you probably get a straight shot to 3850ish area. I think this is best seen perhaps on, um, yeah, let's go over to like a four hour. Let's go to, and let's use a fresh chart over here or a fresher chart, I should say. And let's put on the Fibonacci uh, retracements. Again, I don't, I, I don't always use these things, but Sometimes, sometimes they do have some good work around. Anyways, you can see that uh, Bitcoin did just break the 618 fib over here, which to me is significant. We really didn't bounce off that because I, I believe that your bounce over here already got hit. Th this used up the power. When you buy the 618, you're gonna typically sell the 236. That's gonna be your bot algo target. That's exactly what happened right over here. Beautiful, comes back down to the 618, just just ripping through the whole way because again, this is you know it's fucking bear market, and uh, and we've actually broken it now. So if it did pop back to the 618, probably gonna be a sell to me and that's around uh you know that's basically around a breakdown trend line right over here off this smaller uh, formation and uh and you'll notice also that the 886 is where the measure move off the symmetrical triangle is pointing you down all the way towards over here so there is a lot of good confluence with this area and bitcoin has bitcoin has something weird where it actually does like the 886 um again the 886 is not going to be in your default tool you have to add it in there it certainly is a fibonacci though so is a 942 although definitely doesn't get as much play but in cryptocurrency I do notice that 886 does get some play in traditional land, not as much, but um, interesting. So yeah, uh, and and you know it's never going to be like a straight shot down, right? There are there are supports along the way. I think I already have them on my Bit Mexican chart, but uh, you'll likely have one right over here. Actually, that's kind of where we touched down on already. You have one right over here. Uh, which actually does match with the 786. So I like that. And then obviously our former load around the 886. So yeah, uh, let's go on over and check out Mr. Buterol. Again, Mr. Buterol might, I mean, it's probably not even, it's probably more worthwhile to look at Mr. Buterol just because he led the market up and he's now he's leading the market down. Um, did we break this area right over here or was, or do I have this charted wrong? Perhaps I have it charted wrong. Let me, uh, let me consider these ideas. Um, no, I agree with this. I, I do agree with what I had before, so fair enough. Let's see how this this one plays out. Again, Mr. Buterol, as long as you're below 126 and a half bearish, um, don't really have any reason to be bullish on this thing. Again, beautiful Wyckoff distribution top right over here, getting your first mark down, uh, getting redistributed right over here. In fact, this is even just a, a smaller descending triangle. I think we spoke about this yesterday. The the measure move on this probably has already been hit. Yep, there it is. We're kind of hovering at it right now. Retesting the two hour 21, pretty much a rejection already. And uh, still hanging around this kind of, uh, this support right over here. Actually, this this chart works better on a two hour now, doesn't it? it this, yeah, th th this actually does work better on a two hour. So I'm just gonna line it up as this one seems to be uh, doing, doing well anyways uh, if 117 breaks which I think kind of likely uh, next area of support would be all the way down around here at around 108 um, overall uh, four hour dildo death cross inbound if uh, if mr. Buterol is unable to rally back above 135 in the next uh, day day and a half we'll call it yeah something like that these are pretty aggressive right now so uh, not looking too hot for him um, 12 hour over here 12 hours about to flash pretty nasty sell as well the 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 yellow 21 and the green 55 uh again any any failure to rally back above 135 ish area in the next uh in the next couple days for this one you will get that cross and um perhaps that's the impetus for sending this thing back down to the bottom of the range um so again you know as the event approaches closer you get event sort of psychology we've been talking about this for you know the weeks leading up to it and now you're seeing it firsthand so so i think for a lot of people they already knew this but for the people who haven't seen this before well there you go that here, here's a great example of this about a week, you know, a few days to a week before the actual event starts, wh whether it's, you know, doesn't, doesn't matter what the event is. It's all, the, it's all the same sort of psychology that dump begins because the bigger accounts, the market movers have, you know, ha have caused all the, all the great emotions of FOMO and everything, you know, making people think that, oh, we have an event. So that means that we just go up now, even though it was, you know, it was planned, everyone knew about it. And overall, you know, it's not like it solves the world's problems. Um, but going up all the way over here. So now everyone's super bullish. Everyone gets extremely bullish right over here. Bear market's over. We just 2x. Two, two so, you know, it can't go any fucking lower, bro. And now there's actually people to sell to for the bigger accounts. So so the bigger accounts can can distribute. Um, getting our first markdown over here, redistribution, and then getting marked down once again. If this area does break 117, 
it's just gonna look even worse. Um, and I think that that's probably likely, um, probably likely. Uh, then again, you know, our, you know, our oscillators right over here, they, they, they are gonna start to, you know, signal some sort of exhaustion relatively soon. So it is a little bit of a race against time. Um, but again, you know, we're, just, we're basically just seeing the things play out that we spoke about, you know, over the last uh, week, couple weeks or whatever it might be. Um, you know, this 12 hour on, the, on Bitcoin over here having this uh, nasty cross. That's basically the one that's inbound for Mr. Buterall pretty soon if it's unable to rally back above 135 and a half in the next uh, couple days, I'd say. Um, and you can see that it's starting to govern price action down. I do want to see where the 10 simple is in relation to this because that's that would also be probably a good place to be managing trades on yeah and the 10 simples actually govern are, are basically basically cause that last uh down over here uh very beautiful um very very beautiful in the way that you know you can see that you can see that the bigger accounts are running this market um and the way that they use exponentials so and, and just regular moving averages as well anyways um let's go down over here to I guess, do we want to look at Mr. Ripples? Sure, let's look at Mr. Ripples. Uh, Mr. Ripples, I think a lot easier to read. It's just, you know, again, I'm bearish on this thing. As long as you have a three-day total death cross and you're below the 21, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. We've been speaking about that for quite some time. Um, you know, it's until you get back above 37 cents and close a daily dildo above, or sorry, a three-day dildo uh, above there. Hard chart to love. Um, you do have the 377 coming in around your lowest port, right around 28 cents. Um, so that's your next big support on Mr. Uh, Ripples, Mr. Nipples, whatever you want to call them. Uh, really don't want to see that area break if you're bullish on this thing because uh, not too much holding up from there from the mid to high teens if that were to happen. So uh, kind of uh, <laughs> kind of getting nasty, especially when you have a fresh three-day dollar death cross right over here. Not the best thing, not the best thing. Um, and a clear, clear rejections off this area. Uh, to me, that's likely to get played a little bit more. Uh, let's go look at his brother, um, Mr. Lumens, Rumens, Stella Rumens. <laughs> Uh, right over here, um, 10 cents. Yeah, this guy's coming down as well. Uh, we spoke about this one the other day that, you know, I just don't, I don't understand why everyone's bullish on this thing. Um, you got a very clear and obvious uh, bull trap right over here, you know, where you, where you take out a, a resistance trend line. Everyone gets really, really bullish on it because, you know, it's breaking out, baby, and that means, you know, it ain't going fucking lower. But again, look at the volume down around here. Does that breakout volume? No, fuck no, it's not. Uh, and then getting, and that's typically what happens when you get a failed breakout. It moves extremely fast to the other side of the uh, range and then even further down uh, lower time frames if we do go to them you can actually see on the three day that we are working off of a pattern my chart's kind of nasty right here but uh but you can see that you know once once this area broke over here uh we did put in kind of a triangular consolidation that does have a measure move point in a little bit lower um you know, technically speaking, your 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 big support, just like for Bitcoin, is thirty two fifty. Would be this area right over here, uh, a little bit under ten cents. If that area actually does break on a daily dollar time frame, then I do believe that your next support is likely to be smashed. In fact, I I mean, I just believe that that's likely to happen anyways. Down around here, at around eight, a little like eight and a third cent, eight and a fourth cent. Um, if that area fails, then then six cents right over here, and uh, below that, you know, you're gonna have the six cents to know that you're fucking wrecked at four and a half cents. So Again, um, I'm not saying it's going to get all the way down there, but, you know, a, a just just a nasty chart. You know, it even broke this consult. You know, it's this is a better chart than most not dumping all the way back down to your initial pump, but it's still not a bullish chart. I just don't see why people are, are super bullish on this, um, you know, breaking this area right over here, retesting it and reject it. I mean, what? Uh, I guess I'm just not seeing it, um, but uh, just extremely corrective price action over here as well. Uh, hit and bearish divergence on the daily playing out again still you know still plenty of room down to the lower end of that bearish control zone and it looks like yesterday was actually another re look at yesterday just another rejection of the 10 simple 21 exponential essentially uh, filling out this range pressure is down um, pressure is down o officially want to see nine 9.85 cents break but uh not good um not good let's go over and check out spy again spy um uh I still, I still think, you know, I'm. St it's the same thing as Bitcoin. I'm bearish on it, looking for new lows, you know, over time. But again, over time being that critical factor, I do think that, you know, throughout the rest of January, maybe even early February, it could certainly rally. It could st could certainly still carry out this rally a little bit more. I'd be looking to be a sell around 260 to 261, and I don't want to be bearish. More importantly, I don't want to be bearish until it actually breaks the 200 exponential right over here at around 2 239. Again, it's it's no more complicated than that. Uh, you know, all higher time frames are bearish. This is a nice head and shoulders reversal pattern 
but the but the measure move on this hardy has been hit i mean we've been talking about that for ages beforehand you got your bull trap right over here that was that was a really that was your real entry then another beautiful entry on the break of the neckline at 263 and then just straight down now it's popping all the way back up to the neckline that's technically typically your next place but uh Again, this one is absolutely uh, no no prisoners for bottom shorters, no prisoners for people who have no idea how to trade and uh, listen to CNBC and think that you should be getting short on a fucking bounce. Um, again, that's you know that's just the just the way that the bigger accounts that the people who move these markets know how to punish the people who are less educated and then they get all that uh, they will start to get bullish really really soon and then they're going to have people to sell to once again and you're just going to see the same fucking thing you know getting played out and played out and played out and that's you know that's that's life son anyways um i think that's probably going to start to do it for today's video um i will be back on for a live stream later i'll, I'll quickly recap the lower time frames over here let's go to maybe a two hour yep so lower time frame uh, range resistance 3569 if that area gets broken probably looking back to 36 uh, 80 ish area over here however there is still pressure downwards and uh, measured moves off this bear flag right over here and also this symmetrical triangle right over here is still going lower um, this area over here would be about 34 35 we have found bounce a little bit off of the initial support of this guy right over here at 34 75 but uh you know, if it came down around here, I'd probably close more shorts. Um, and if it breaks this area right over here, 34, 35, then I am looking towards the full, you know, the, the full move down to about 3,300, 3,250. So again, that's going to, you know, that's going to do it for today. Um, I'll be back on later with some live stream action. If I don't see you there, well, I wish you a happy Monday. Ho wish that you have the best Monday possible of, that you could ever have in your good old cryptocurrency life. But if, uh, if I do see you later, well, looking forward to seeing you anyways. Um, that's yeah. <laughs> Just repeating myself now. I apologize about that. All right, guys, take care and I'll see you guys soon.